Today, we're going to talk about the patient who presents with a first trimester vaginal bleed chief complaint. This is a relatively common chief complaint seen in the emergency department, so having an algorithmic approach will allow you to see these patients efficiently. So the first step in evaluating these patients is to actually confirm that they are in fact pregnant. This can be done via a quick bedside urine pregnancy test. There's no real point in going down this algorithm if your patient is not even pregnant. The next step would be to create a critical differential diagnosis. This way, when you see the patient, you know exactly what you're looking for. The first critical differential that we are most concerned about would be an ectopic pregnancy because this is in fact the most life-threatening diagnosis that the patient could have. The next diagnosis would be a threatened abortion. followed by an inevitable abortion. An incomplete abortion. A complete abortion. And finally, a septic abortion. Now that we have our critical differential diagnosis, we can now go see the patient and be much more focused with our history and physical exam. In your history, it's important to ask the patient about their G's and P's when their last menstrual period was and in any of their prior pregnancies that went to term, was it a vaginal delivery, a C-section, or were there any other complications with any of the other pregnancies? When you present this case to your attending, you want to, in fact, start your first line of your presentation with that information. On the physical exam, you want to evaluate the abdomen to see if there's any signs of peritonitis, because this could be secondary to a ruptured ectopic. If the patient has a positive pregnancy test, there's peritonitis on abdominal exam, and a fast exam is then that is positive, OB should be consulted emergently for a most likely ectopic pregnancy. On pelvic exam, you're gonna try to elicit adnexal tenderness. Again, looking for the presence of an ectopic pregnancy. When you evaluate the vaginal vault, you want to see if there's any evidence of blood or products of conception. And finally, on your bimanual exam, it's important to notice whether or not the os is open or closed. Next, we'll focus on the workup for these patients. In terms of labs, you'd want to order a CBC to make sure that the patient is not anemic, as well as to evaluate the platelets to make sure they're not thrombocytopenic. Coags can be checked to make sure that the patient is in at increased risk of bleeding. A beta HCG can be used to determine how far along in the pregnancy the patient is. An RH is important in terms of whether or not you need to give your patient Rogam. It's also important to get a UA to assess whether or not your patient has a UTI as well as a vaginal wet mount. For imaging, an ultrasound should be performed to see if there is in fact an intrauterine pregnancy that's viable. So let's go through each of our critical differentials and now that we have all this information on the history, physical, and workup, we can work through each one of these to see what the patient has. As stated earlier, an ectopic pregnancy is the most critical diagnosis to evaluate for. If the patient has a positive pregnancy test, positive peritonitis on exam, and a fast exam that revealed free fluid, this patient has an ectopic until proven otherwise, so call OB. In a threatened abortion, the OS will be closed, and the ultrasound will show 
an IUP. Depending on how far along the pregnancy is, a fetal heart rate can even be calculated. In an inevitable abortion, the os will be open and the ultrasound will show an IUP. In an incomplete abortion, again, the os will be open. There may have been some passage of products of conception. And on ultrasound, there will be the presence of retained products. In a complete abortion, all the products have passed and the os will be closed. So on ultrasound, there will be no retained products of conception. The uterus will be empty. In a septic abortion, the os will be open. There may or may not have been passage of products of conception. And the ultrasound will show retained products of conception. The patient will be septic, so there could be evidence of fever, tachycardia, hypotension. Now let's talk about disposition. The easiest one is ectopic. If your patient has an ectopic, they should go straight to the operating room. Recess aggressively with blood, etc. But don't delay in getting this patient to the operating room. If the patient has a threatened abortion, they can be discharged home. If the diagnosis is an inevitable abortion, then OBGYN can be consulted and the patient can be scheduled for a DNC if necessary. If it's an incomplete abortion, then again, OBGYN can be consulted and the patient can be scheduled for a DNC if necessary. If the patient had a completed abortion, then there is not really much to do, so the patient can be discharged home. If the patient presents with a septic abortion, then generally these patients are sicker, so they should be admitted for IV antibiotics, IV fluids, um, and OB should be consulted for a DNC. Before we wrap up, let's go ahead and just run through one scenario. So let's say you have a patient who comes in who reports that she's very early in her pregnancy. It checks out and she in fact does have a positive urine pregnancy test. On exam, her os is closed. However, on ultrasound, nothing is visualized in the uterus. Now what? At this point, we're still really concerned about an ectopic pregnancy. If we don't see it in the uterus, where is it? Because the pregnancy may just be too early to detect on ultrasound, what we would do in this case is schedule for a 48-hour recheck of the patient's beta HCG and follow up with OBGYN so that it can be confirmed that this is in fact not an ectopic pregnancy. And that's about it. So hopefully this algorithmic approach will help you in seeing these patients more efficiently when they come into the emergency department or to your clinic. Thanks for watching.